G'day everybody, it's Craig Cobb here from Trade with Precision with another free news edit for the 16th of April and what a 24 hours or 12 to 24 hours it's been. Volatility has been rampant. It's been massive. Lots and lots of things going on across index markets, some foreign exchange pairs, uh, massive moves in metals. Uh, that's probably the most, uh, you know, most volatile area. And I just want to sort of give some options or some, not so much options, but Help you with some things that I, I believe that people trip up on around this volatility. But first, before I go any further, I want to come back and I want to recap a trade call that I put out there last week on last week's video. Now, I was talking about this if we pull back in uh, on Aussie Yen. Let me just zoom in a little bit and then go backwards. Where are we? God, it's so sensitive, this little... Uh do you like it? There we go. So I said that I joined the fibs and when price was somewhere up around here, I had said I hadn't yet raised the order because I was waiting for uh, for the price to pull back. Well, it did. I just drew my fibs in it, drew, pulled back into this cluster, which I was talking about. I really like the look of it. And I let you guys know. Uh, got the trigger, got the entry, got the profit, got the trade done. And as you can see, that, that was the entry. It did run on a lot further. But uh, I don't always get to do you know trade calls on these free webinars, and I only do them when, uh, when there's a good trade standing out for us to point out, and also when there's actually a trade, because you know I'm not looking to trade every single time I do one of these videos. Just to show you, um, I did take the, the trade. I did take the screenshot. As you can see, starting to pull back. I took the screenshots because I thought we would get entry. I did get that, and I did get my profit. So that's Aussie Yen recapping the trade call from last week. It was a nice profit. Maybe some of you guys took it. Maybe some of you didn't. Either way, that was the trade. Now, to have a look at some of these metals, let's first of all have a look at the hottest metal mover at the moment, and that is by far silver. This morning when I got up, I saw that silver was down over 12%. Yes, 12%. Uh, let's have a look what's happened. Well, it's simply broken down through a very strong level of support, and the next level of support really is down around this $20 mark. But look at this daily chart. It is extremely overextended. We have moved so far in such a short period of time. Now, when this occurs, when these bars are so big, it's high volatility. The reason I'm telling you this is because generally, people that are in before the high volatility on these little red candles in the cell zone like this, they're the ones that make the money. The people that are jumping in while the high volatility is around, those are the people that lose the money. So what do you do? How do you become a more successful trader? How do you make more money from your trading while keeping yourself safe? Well, do this. Ignore the huge volatility. If there's no good trade setups there, don't start trading just because it's plastered all over the news that silver, silver and gold are having you know, massive moves. Just because you start to hear it in the press just means that it's probably over. Your room for opportunity is probably gone. Okay, So a lot of traders, what they do is they hear about this. It's on the news. Silver's tanked 12% of the day. Gold's done 10% or 9%, whatever it was. They start to think, oh, I've got to start trading gold. There's a huge amount of volatility there. That's where I've got to be. They want to capture this move. It's already happened, but it's already happened. They lose their money. They say you can't make money trading or they get frustrated with it. So, professional traders, what are we doing? We are sitting back and waiting. Professional traders, do you think that the best traders in the world, the guys and girls that are making money week on week, are thinking, oh, I've got to get into the market while it's tanking? No, they are in the market before these major moves. They're holding their trades during these major moves, and they're getting out when all the Muppet Show gets in. The Muppet Show are all you know people that have no idea and just trade based on one thing alone, and that's the volatility. Don't be a Muppet, guys. Be a professional. These times of volatility as we've got right now, I would be expecting to see some sort of a pullback, but because there is that much volatility, because there's a lot of things going around in the market at the moment and in the world at the moment, I'm not really that interested in gold or silver at the moment because of those high levels of volatility. So I just want to make sure that you've got a bit of a helmet on, a bit of a seatbelt, and you don't get suckered into uh, these major movers when really uh, they can be very dangerous at the time when the volatility is at the most. Now, some charts that I like the look of. Now, a lot of the yens are back into the buy zone, and they're very bullish again today. 
Uh, I was this morning when I got up, really hoping for a small bullish candle in the buys, and as you can see, the weekly is moving quite nicely. The daily's also pulled back into that trend, but the problem is, once again, a very big candle. Now, it's a very big candle, so I won't be trading off the daily candle. I will, however, be looking at the lower time frames to see if we can get a move higher, especially if the higher that daily candle is to be broken tomorrow, then I will be certainly looking for opportunities to get long and rejoin this trend. And that goes across a lot of the yen pairs. Swiss yen uh, is certainly one of my favorites because it is pulling back into this level and the trend is majorly in uh, in check, it's fine. Aussie Swiss is another one to really consider here and look at because first of all, it's in a range. Now I don't like to really range trade, but I'll give the exception every now and again uh, because there is a trend within this range. I don't trade the top and the bottom of ranges just for the sake of being at the top or the bottom of a range. However, you can see here for quite some time, hit the top to the bottom, back to the top, back to the bottom, back to the top, well, probability would suggest that we are likely to head back to the bottom. Now, I'm not just going to trade short because of that one reason. I come down here to the daily chart and I can see lower high, lower high, lower high. Here's our low, lower low, lower low. The daily is in a downtrend heading back down towards this lower point. So I drill down to these lower time frames and see if there's any opportunities for me to take advantage of a short move back down to around these lows somewhere. That's the way I'm going to be looking at Aussie Swiss. It's not the greatest trend out there. Uh, it's just that we're in a range and it's an opportunity to trade the movement in this range by following this daily trend. Be very careful on these types of trades however. Another one that I like the look of uh, is Sterling Swiss. Uh, this is a trade that I've held all week. I'm still short Sterling Swiss as not a great deal has happened. Uh, a little bit lower and a little bit of profit to where I got in. Uh, just to recap what we've got here is we've got the weekly in a downtrend pull back into the sell zone. Small red candle in the sell zone. A breakdown of the low is the move lower. Now i believe I brought it up last week. Uh, my stop was above this level here. As you can see, that level's held. Uh, and we've just sort of didn't do a lot last week. Had a big sell-off on Friday, or a bit of a sell-off on Friday. Yesterday, bearish candle. Today, if we can break down through these lows, I'm really confident that we will see a move lower, pushing down towards this 1.4 level. So something else to point out is this. Uh, if we look at the four-hour time frame, you can start to see we've got a bit of a flat level starting to form in here. Uh, these lows through here, bit of support and resistance in the past, but you can see we do have a clear downtrend, and we do look set for a break. If we sorry, if we break that level to continue lower, and if you come down to even the you know the, the, the two-hour time frame to make it a little bit clearer, a bit of a flat level starting to form, and we are converging. So I am stalking that flat level for opportunities to the short side. If I get one, I may look for a, tr a breakout trade to get short, depending on how the rest of the chart looks up. If it breaks down and I miss the break and it pulls back, opportunities to sell in and around there. But nothing has set up now. There are no orders raised, just keeping an eye on this flat level to see if it can become a stronger level. I want at least one more touch. Then we come to my favorite chart by far, and it is KiwiCAD. Again, KiwiCAD back in the spotlight, the monthly intact, a lovely trend, the weekly intact, a lovely trend, the daily intact also, and a wonderful trend here. I wish we had a small green candle in the buy zone, but we don't. We've got another large candle here, converging on the indicators, uh, back in the buy zone, looking extremely good. I am looking for longs on KiwiCAD. There's no secret there. It is by far, in my opinion, the best trend out there in this high volatility. It's not gone overboard. It's not got these erratic price moves. It's not moved 20 or 10 or 14 or 6% a day. It's just in a lovely, lovely trend with plenty of room to the upside. And that's what I'll be looking at. This week, with the volatility around, it could be a week where you don't do much trading. I'm not too concerned about that whatsoever. My job as a professional trader is to by far trade well. It's not to get involved when volatility strikes. It's to be involved before before it happens and take advantage of volatility because I'm already positioned in that. My job as a trader is to remain cool, calm, collected, stick to my strategy, follow my plan, and more importantly, have a plan to follow. Now guys, this is why I showed you about the volatility. Be careful around these periods. It fits in perfectly with this week's um, webinar topic. The webinar topic for this week is how to become a successful trader. What we're looking here is we're looking at the path of successful trading, what one must do to ensure their success as a trader. We 
often, time and time again, say trading is not easy. It takes consistency and it takes confidence and it takes a plan. Look, you're entering into a business. You need all those three things to be successful in any business. We're going to teach you the three critical errors that most unprofitable traders are making and then we're going to show you how to overcome them. If you are not profitable, you must be on this particular webinar. It is going to be Wednesday the 17th of April at 8 p.m. which converts to 6 a.m. New York, 11 a.m. London and 10 p.m. Auckland. Guys, once again, I cannot stress to you enough how much how important it is this week to remain cool, stick to your plans, don't get sucked in by the volatility, the press and the news. If you've missed the moves, it's exactly what's happened. You've missed it. Be patient and wait for the next moves. Join me on how to become a successful trader and I'll point out a few other things you might need to work on. Click on the link below to join and I'll speak to you on Wednesday. Bye for now.